Hello and welcome everyone to Synapse Ed. So far in our hematology portion, we have discussed about the formation of various blood components as well as the formation of hemoglobin. We also discussed about the destruction of RBC and various clinical conditions which are related to the destruction of RBC. Now in today's lecture, we'll be discussing about the abnormalities which are related to the rate of synthesis of uh, hemoglobin molecule. Actually, I'm talking about the thalassemia. Now, thalassemia is a disorder in which we have the reduced rate of synthesis of hemoglobin gene. Now, you should know that there is no structural abnormality within the thalassemia. The only problem within the thalassemia is that we have the reduced rate of synthesis of hemoglobin molecule chains. Now, you should know that we have three types of hemoglobin. One is known as HbA, that is A stands for adult. And second is second form in the adult, that is known as HbA2. And then we have the fetal hemoglobin, which is HbF. Now in HbA or the adult form of hemoglobin, we have two alpha and two beta chains, right? Then in second form of the adult hemoglobin, we have two alpha and two delta chains. And finally, in the fetal hemoglobin, we have two alpha and two gamma chains, right? So what we conclude from this is that alpha chains are present in all types of hemoglobin, whether it is adult or fetal, right? And if we discuss about the beta chains, these are present only in the adult stage. While as if we discuss about the gamma chains, these are present only in the fetal life. And the delta chains constitute only 3% of the adult hemoglobin. So only 3% of the adult hemoglobin is A2 form, while as the 97% is HbA. With that said, we'll discuss about the classification of thalassemia. But you should know that we'll only discuss about the alpha thalassemia and the beta thalassemia. Why? Because the delta chain is very rare in nature. It constitutes only 3% of the adult hemoglobin. Therefore, its presence or absence is not of that much clinical significance. So we're not going to discuss about this. And also, the gamma chain deficiency is very rare in nature. So we're not going to discuss about the gamma thalassemia also. So we'll only discuss about the alpha thalassemia and the beta thalassemia. And we are going to discuss about the alpha thalassemia in today's lecture, while as we'll discuss about the beta thalassemia in our next lecture. Now, what is the cause behind the alpha thalassemia? The cause is actually gene deletion. Okay, so due to gene deletion, what we'll see, we'll see the reduced amount of alpha chain synthesis. Now you should know the normal genetics behind the alpha chain synthesis. There are actually two alpha chains present per hemoglobin molecule. For example, in adult, we have alpha 2, beta 2. In second form of adult hemoglobin, we have alpha 2, gamma, delta 2. And in fetal hemoglobin, we have alpha 2 and gamma 2, right? So two hemoglobin, sorry, two alpha chains are present within each hemoglobin molecule. And for the uh, synthesis, we require four genes. So four genes are required for the synthesis of two alpha chains. Actually, these genes are present on the homologous pair of chromosome, chromosome number 16. So for example, if this is a homologous pair of chromosome number 16. Okay, so we have genes for the alpha chain synthesis located on the homologous pair of chromosome. So this is gene number 1, this is gene number 2, this is gene number 3, this is gene number 4. So we actually have 4 genes which are responsible for the formation of 2 alpha chains. Now, if there is gene deletion, what we will see is, we will see the reduction in the rate of synthesis of alpha chains. And the severity of the alpha thalassemia depends upon the gene deletion. What I mean to say is, more the number of gene deletions, or if for example, three genes are absent, then we will have more severe alpha thalassemia. While as if we will have only one, de uh, one gene deletion, therefore we will have less severe alpha thalassemia. So with that said, we should know that, for example, if we have all the four types of uh, genes present, then we will see 100% of the alpha chains are synthesized. Then in second condition, if we have only one gene absent, then we have 75% of the alpha chain synthesis. Obviously, because 25% is contributed by a gene. And this condition is asymptomatic. So this condition is asymptomatic and it is a silent carrier. Why? Because it does not show any feature, but it can transmit the traits of alpha thalassemia into the next generation. For example, if this one, this chromosome will enter into the gamut, it may lead to the thalassemia in the fetus, right? Now in the third condition, what we have is, we have the deficiency of two genes. Now two genes may be absent uh, in two possible cases. One is if we have the absence of two genes on a single chromosome. And that condition is known as 
cis form, cis gene deletion. And if you have a deletion of chromosomes on two pair of homologous chromosome, then that is known as trans gene deletion. So if on the same chromosome, this is known as cis gene deletion. If one on each uh, of the homologous chromosome, then it is known as trans gene deletion. Now both of these conditions, whether it may be cis or trans, these are mild symptomatic. So these are mild symptomatic. But if we discuss about the CVRT with respect to the next progeny, you should know that the cis form is very dangerous. Why? I'll tell you over here. See, for example, these are the two conditions. Okay, so sorry, these are the two genes. If two genes are absent on the same chromosome, for example, this does not contain any alpha gene, while as this contains two alpha genes. And there's a possibility that this chromosome that does not contain any alpha uh, gene can enter into the gamete. And if this chromosome which does not contain any alpha gene will enter into the gamete, it will cause the severe, severe th alpha thalassemia. And so this is very severe with respect to the next progeny. But uh, within that uh, person, both the conditions are mildly symptomatic. Now discussing about the fifth condition in which we have the three gene deletion. Now, as there are three genes, as three genes are deleted, therefore we have only 25% of the genes being synthesized. As a result, we'll see very few alpha chains are available for the binding of oxygen or for the formation of hemoglobin. And in the final condition, we have all the four genes absent. Therefore, there is no alpha chain synthesis at all. As a result, the fetus does not survive more than third month. Now we'll discuss about the pathology of last two cases only in the next slide. We are not going to discuss about the pathology of other cases. Why? Because these are either asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. So we'll discuss about the pathology of last two cases only. Now the condition in which we have three uh, genes absent, in this case what will happen is, we'll have decreased alpha chain synthesis obviously because only 25% uh, alpha chains are being formed therefore there will be very, uh, very much reduction in the alpha chains. Now as a result, see normally what happens, there are two alpha and two beta in adult. But if alpha is absent, then what will happen? Beta will form a, tetra, a tetramer. Okay, so there will be a beta 4 uh, molecule being formed. So we have a beta 4 molecule and this hemoglobin is also known as HBH. Okay, now there is an important thing that is affinity. This HBH has very high affinity. Now why it has high affinity? You should know that generally alpha chains have the least affinity followed by the beta chains and followed by the gamma chains. So gamma chains have the highest affinity, sorry. So gamma chains have the highest affinity. The least affinity is of alpha, then of beta, and the highest affinity is of gamma. Now, as we had two alpha and two beta, therefore it was having less affinity to oxygen. Why? Because it's having two alpha and two beta. Now, when we have beta four ditramer, therefore as all the uh, four are beta, therefore it will have more affinity. Now, what do I mean by affinity? Affinity simply means bonding. Right? So affinity means bonding and affinity to, offer to oxygen means bonding to oxygen. Whenever the beta molecule will attach to the oxygen molecule, it will attach to it quickly but it won't release it within the tissue quickly. Why? Because it's bonded to it very, with a very high strength. Therefore, as it's bonded to it with a very high strength, it won't release it within the tissue and we'll see severe hypoxia developing within the tissues. Why? Because oxygen is not being delivered to the tissue because of the high affinity, right? So HBH, uh, and also there's another important thing that HBH is actually insoluble within the RBC and it will get precipitated in the RBC and form inclusions. And if we have a supravital staining, we'll see a golf ball appearance. So we'll uh, see a golf ball appearance in case of uh, this HBH form of the alpha thalassemia and we can see it under supravital staining. This is an important question and it's being generally asked in various entrance examinations. Now discussing about the final condition in which we have the absence of all the four genes. As a result, we won't see any alpha gene at all. So what will happen during embryonic life itself, we will have the formation of gamma four tetramer. And as I told you, the gamma has the highest affinity, therefore it won't release any oxygen at all. And as it won't release any oxygen at all, therefore there will be severe hypoxia. 
so the tissue so the oxygen uh, reaching to the tissues will be very less and as a result the organs will get damaged for example if we have a liver damage what will happen liver generally synthesizes various proteins plasma proteins and as the, the, these proteins are responsible for viscosity of blood and as there is liver damage therefore we won't have any protein therefore their viscosity will also reduce as a result the water or the fluid will re be retained within the tissues it won't enter into the blood vessel okay and also if a uh, heart is damaged due to the hypoxia we will have congestive cardiac failure due to both the two conditions we'll have water retention in various organs for example we'll have pleural effusion or uh, ascites we'll also see some other conditions for example accumulation of water within the skin due to all these conditions we'll develop hydrops fetalis and it's a, a dangerous condition which will lead to the death of the baby within the embryo embryonic life and the baby cannot live more than three months. So the baby will only live up to three months and after that the baby cannot live due to the hydrops fetalis. And you should know that this hydrops fetalis is actually non-immune hydrops fetalis. Okay, so that's pretty much about the alpha thalassemia. In our next lecture, we'll be discussing about the beta thalassemia. So guys, that was it. Please subscribe to my channel. And thank you very much for your support. Keep subscribing, keep sharing. Thank you everyone.